Welcome to the Ripple Effect by the Alliance. We are committed to raising the frequency of our planet. We'll discuss hot topics, share practical tools and sacred frequencies to reveal the magic in your life. Come, Come laugh, laugh, cry, and, and have fun with us. <laughs> Hello, welcome back everyone to the Ripple Effect pod. I am joined with my host, co-host rather, Stacia, Hannah, and my name is Sarah. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're one of our returning listeners, we're so excited to have you back. Today, our topic is pick your five. We've been hitting at this for a little bit. Um, We've mentioned how important it is, who we surround ourselves with, especially when we're on our self-development journey. If you just did the gratitude ripple with us, we talked about this. Um, We also invited you to, you know, if you don't have people around you that you want to surround yourself with right now on your journey we can be three of your five so there you go one two three (laughs) knocked off your list so we want to chat with you a little bit more and explain and go a bit deeper into what it means to pick your five why it's important does this mean you have to eliminate everybody under your life (laughs) and uh just give you a better perspective on what that means so um who would like to begin for today's episode? I'm tempted to go to Hana. Um, yeah, okay. We're all like, all fingers are pointing at. I'm like, I can go, but okay, we're gonna pass it. Uh, and then we'll each, we'll each. Don't worry, we're all gonna be giving you a perspective on this. But. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know what's interesting is when we begin on this um, self development journey. Usually, we learn very quickly. Um, that the people closest to us sometimes have resistance to our change if they're not on the journey themselves. So what happens is that we want to grow and get better and the people around us are like, they want us to change, but not really. Mm -hmm. And so it's like being in a, a bucket of crabs. I don't know if you know how people catch crabs, poor things. So if you get a bucket with no top, and you put one crab in, the crab will come out of the bucket and escape. However, if you put two crabs, then they're safe in the bucket. Why? Because if one crab starts to get out, the other one will pull it down. Mm -hmm. And so they can fill up a bucket and they will never leave because once once one of the crabs tries to leave, the other ones are going to tear him down and bring him back down. And So um, we're like crabs, unfortunately, right? And how many times have you had an idea or get get an insight or an inspiration to do something, to start a project, to start a business, and you you come and share it with your people, and the first thing they do is, oh, that'll never work. Oh, who do you think you are to try to do that? Yeah. And it is, and if we choose to continue in spite of them, which takes a lot of courage and strength, usually those people will fall out of our lives. Mm-hmm. They literally will, there will be a point in your journey. And that's why I call it the Hotel California, because we check into this hotel and then all of a sudden we're in the hotel alone. And it gets lonely Mm -hmm. and it gets scary because we feel like we're never going to find, we're going to be alone for the rest of our lives. And humans are gregarious by nature. So the fact that, you know, we have loners, obviously, but in general, we are gregarious. We need groups. We want friends. We want family. We want to feel a sense of belonging. And all of a sudden, we're a party of one, and it gets crazy. But that, if if you're at that point and you're watching, know that as you keep going, you will start attracting the people that you're vibrating to, yeah. right? They may not be at the top, but you're going to attract what you vibrate to. Now, the trick here or the challenge might be to vibrate at a higher frequency and be able to hold more space for better things to come in into our lives. 
And I think I, I heard Wayne Dyer one time saying, we attract who we are, not mm -hmm. what we desire, right? We attract who we are. And as we grow and better ourselves and become more aware and more connected to our God self and our connection to God, we um, start attracting things that match our vibration more. But in order for that to happen, we need to make room. And there might be a big shakeup, right? And those people will definitely fall away. I know that throughout my life, I've had waves, you, you know, it's ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. And there are times when I'm surrounded by people and then I grow again. And then I find myself back into that space of like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm alone again. And then I grow again. And then I start attracting people that are vibrating more closely and are more, have more affinity to what I'm vibrating to and the things that I'm looking for. And I'm, I'm looking um, right now, I'm, I'm building a business and I'm getting surrounded by, uh, it's funny because at first um, I felt like I was herding ducks. I, and, and then I'm like, no, I am going to focus on my leaders, the ones who can think for themselves, the ones who can take action, the ones that are not completely and fully dependent on me. So if I'm not around or if I have something to do or I'm taking care of another person, they just freeze like, you know, like deer in the headlights. And so what I've been focusing on is growing myself as a leader so that I can attract more like-minded and like-hearted people that will be here working alongside me on this mission and so that I don't have to drain myself. Because a lot of the times, you know, I'll get I'll get approached by people that want so much from me and they're not willing to put in the work or the effort. They just want things done for them. And and because I'm my tendency is to give, then I at the end of the day, I find myself absolutely drained. Like last week, I was voiceless at the end of the day. I literally lost my voice. And I'm like. Okay. And I wasn't sick. Nothing happened. But I said, I am at that point where I need to pull back and start handing the ball back to them and telling them, go figure it out. Go call somebody else. Go call this person. Do this, do that. And, and pointing them towards themselves and to other people so that I'm not drained. So it's important to, to, to learn to set limits. Now, the other thing that happens is usually we don't even know how to set our limits. Heck, I didn't even know that I was allowed to have limits until uh, maybe a, a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago. I can't remember. Like, time has gone so fast. Maybe it was three years. But um, I feel like it was yesterday, frankly. But I was like, I, I heard somebody talk about limits. And, and I was like, wait. I can have limits too, because I was taught to respect everybody else's limits. So I was living within the, the borders of everybody else's limits. So can you imagine like a, like a beehive and the, the hexagon and like the limits would uh, get there. But sometimes people's limits would just like crush me because I didn't have limits. So if one person was, their limit was, would come over me, I was just like jelly, right? Trying to figure out where... Um, how to navigate people encroaching on me and my limits. And then I realized, wait, I can say no. And no is a full sentence. I can push back. I can say, okay, I'm willing to do this or, or I'm committed to this and I'm going. And the train is leaving the station. So you can either jump on the train and come with or See you later, alligator. You catch on at the next station or when, or, or not. It's your choice. But it's, it's important to give other people the choice as well. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm, I'm nodding my head. Um, Stacia, if you want to go, you can, but I was just, do you want to go? <laughs> oh, no, I was just okay. like, yeah, yeah. I was no. just going to say um, that I, 
that's sort of where I went to for my, like for me on my journey, it was, um, I, I'm doing this, but I'm not like forcing it on them, but like the invitations there. And it was sort of like an unsaid invitation. It was like, like, you can come with me, you can rise with me and, and do this just by the way I was acting and the way I was, um, the, I guess, yeah, the bat, would it be boundaries that I was putting in place? Um, I remember one friend of mine was always very negative. So anytime I was around that person, it was like, always like, oh, I felt like, like the little things in, in the little mermaid pulling me back down. And I was like, I just, for me though, at first I couldn't, I had to just distance myself from that person. Well, I started to surround myself with more high vibration women like you ladies, but you, there's certain people you can't distance yourself from like, you know, your spouse <laughs> that you live with who might be like, we were both in that headspace. So that's where that like unsaid invitation came where it wasn't, I, I wasn't pushing that on him, but he saw me changing and then that allowed him to come and rise up with me. And that, um, that was, when I look back on it, I'm like, wow, that was a beautiful thing that had someone told me that was going to be what happened. Cause I didn't know. Um, I would have been like, no way <laughs> that can't happen. So now when you're saying that, it's like, yeah, that's exactly what I did too. And here we are. Yeah. We become the invitation, right? We mm -hmm. can. And, um, and some people will take it and some people and will some not. People right? Like that, that one friend didn't. And so, but she sort of, it, she didn't at first, um, until she, I remember one time she messaged me and said, okay, Miss Positivity, how can I, how can I change my perspective on this? I was like, what? <laughs> Wait, you want to change your perspective? <laughs> She's like, how can I look at this differently? I think she, I think people eventually get tired of feeling like shit <laughs> and focusing on the negative. Right. And it's like, I think that finally sort of rubbed off on her, but it was never me pushing it. And I right. chose to find people who um, were investing in themselves, were trying to be better, um, were looking at things through a different lens than we had before. And that, um, that kept me vibrating at a whole different frequency, which made it feel easier, even though it was very difficult. A very difficult mm. journey when you're going through that yeah. it's exciting it's fun but it's scary as hell yeah yeah Absolutely. i love that you you've said chose like we chose to do this mm. did we choose this yeah. or by ch by changing ourselves did Definitely. the universe just put these people onto our path because they wouldn't be there other way mm. you, you know what i mean That's like profound i love that yeah because yeah. I, I think so much of our life we spend wearing these masks of who we think other people think we need to be. And we don't want to take that mask off. And sometimes we have so many masks that it just really gets very um, compounding on us as far as what do I want? Because I'm always so concerned about what does somebody else want around me? Oh, and now I'm around this person. What do, what do they want around? You know, what do they want from me over here? So as we start to realize that, you know, what we're desiring you know, we're holding space for what we're desiring, but we have to become what we're desiring. Mm -hmm. And that can sometimes take a lot. It, it can be a, it can be a quick switch or it can really take a long time yeah. if somebody's willing to do it. But until people realize that who you are becoming is going to become your reality, you know, it, it, it can be just stuck in that people pleasing energy mm -hmm. and, you know, really just trying to not hurt people's feelings and, and realizing maybe even that, you know, there's like all these levels sometimes that you feel bad when people are getting left behind because you, you see it. And I have a lot of friends that they didn't, they didn't want to take the hand to come up. They wanted to stay where they are. And, and it's hard to say, well, I can't stay here with you, yeah. but I'm going to hold that space if you want to climb up eventually and, you know, wish them well, wish them love. Yeah. But I really feel like 
the changes that we make inside of ourselves, is, and it, we really begin to see them around us. And it might be very little, or it might be just like, wah! And yeah, the gates, the gates open and the light <laughs> comes on and the angels are singing. And it's like, this makes yeah. so much sense. But it's all that, that willingness of, you know, your vulnerability, your ability to set boundaries. And, and then that space of allowing, you know, the old to fall off and, and that new, that new energy to come in is going to bring with it people that are now more on your frequency. Exactly. So. But you know, there's a danger. There's a danger when we start doing this work because we begin to feel like we discovered the, the black thread and we want to share it with other people. And there's two things. There's the wanting to share and wanting to um, impose our, our, our discoveries on others because mm -hmm. we're so excited and sometimes people are not ready to hear it. And the other one is that there's a payoff. When we help somebody, or at least we feel that we help them or we guide them or we this or we that, that is why when people succeed, the generality of people doesn't get happy for them because it's easier to have somebody call you and tell you they're doing horrible mm -hmm. because it makes you feel better about yourself. It's horrible, but it's true. You know, and if somebody like, if I'm an actor and I hear that my friend won the Oscar, I'm happy for them. But there's a part of me that's like, I didn't get the Oscar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? There's that feeling. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to master our minds. And that is what we work on. Mm -hmm. Right? We've had to work on, on if somebody around us is successful, to be happy for them. Because we know and truly happy. And not have the feeling of, oh, but I didn't do it. Because we know if they can have it, we can have it. And it's all about our own work and how much we've put into it to be able to, to hold more. But it takes a while if we're vibrating at a lower level. And like I said, there's a payoff. And we don't want to let go of the people that are not doing great because we're doing a little better. We might be like here, but we're like, ooh. Those lowly people down there, they need my help and mm. they don't because yeah. each one of us is in our own individual, specific, solitary journey. Yeah. You know, and we have to just keep on our track and, 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 and beware of those, of those temptations. Right. So, because it's, it's harder to let go of someone if you feel like they need you. <laughs> right that, that's such a good point though because I remember I when you said that I was like damn that's right I remember I remember that when I first was getting into the online space I remember having those feelings of jealousy like I was happy for them but also jealous whereas now I'm like that doesn't happen really right but that took like a while <laughs> that took a little while to get there um so yeah that's such a good point because that might come up for people and for me it wasn't about like completely um, I, I found I didn't have to cut people out of my life. They fell off on their own. It was never like, okay, I'm on this journey and I'm better than you now. So I'm cutting you out. Um, it, it was just, they sort of fell off on their own. Um, and then, and then they come back when they're ready. Like Stacia was saying like, okay, you ready? Okay. Grab my hand. Let's go. Right. Some of them come back. You yeah. know, some of them jump over us. Now I have a question for all of you. Did your five, does your five stay the same or how has it changed? Oh, mine have evolved. Yeah. Always, always yeah. changing. Mine always too. changing. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I do a friend cleaning at the end of the year, every year. <laughs> like it's that. like my spring cleaning, but I do it in the winter. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. She's I got just sweeping people yeah. out of her life. Here yeah. you go. I'm like, I can no. see it. I do an analysis. Am I being a contribution to this person? And is this person being a contribution to me? Right. Mm -hmm. right. And if they're being a contribution to me and I'm not being a contribution, I mm -hmm. energetically set them free. Because if I'm the needy person clawing at them, I don't want to be that person either. Mm -hmm. I don't want them feeling that, oh, poor Hannah, she has so much drama. And I've been told, like, you have so much drama in your life. Meanwhile, their, their life's a shit show, right? And I'm like, wait, 
Okay. Well, I think we all have drama and we all attract certain things in during certain times of our lives. And there are times in our lives where, where things seem like impossible. And there's times in our lives where it's not so bad. Yeah. Right. And our aim is to, at least for me, is to have no drama, zero drama, but right. whatever. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. um, but if you're not contributing also, it takes, it takes guts and self-awareness to say, I release you. And if they choose to stay, that's wonderful. But then there's no attachment and there's no um, uh, codependency or toxicity in the relationship because they're, if, as long as you know that they're free to come and go and be okay with it, then it just clears the, the space and it makes it, it opens for so mm. much magic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, for I sure. Agree. I think that we try to, um, we try to pretend we have some kind of sense of control. Mm. And, th and that's where we get stuck in a lot of these relationships because you just hit it, that codependency. Well, she needs me. Well, he needs me. And, and, and then that just, you know, just gives our power away. But it's like, we've got to be able to say, you know what, I need me. And whatever's for my highest good is for my highest good. And, and we've got to be able to stay in that flow and know that your five today may not be your five next year or your five the year after that nope. because we're constantly evolving and changing and everything everything in our life you know matches who we're becoming or next week after hearing this episode yes <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> if you've been swept out of hana's life we do apologize yeah. maybe... <laughs> someone's like, wait a minute yeah i haven't heard yeah. from hana in a while here she is. Oh, am I one of those people? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I think that gives everybody a good idea of like what we mean by pick your five and, mm -hmm. and how to approach that and how to look at that. And I love, I wrote it down what you said, like, what do you want? Um, Stacia, you had said that, like, what do you want? And I think that's an important thing to reflect on when you're doing this. It's like, it's not about them. They're on their own journey. <laughs> This is your journey. Where do you want to be right in a year from now? And are the people that you're surrounding yourself with, are you going to be in the same position or are they going to help get you there? Right. Um, right. Well, because you don't want to give importance to someone that's not really adding to yeah. your life. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it can be really tough. And I think just the same pick your five. I really just don't think that we're picking them. Mm -hmm. I just believe that because of who we're becoming, yes. they're just going to show up and we just have to be willing to, to see that. Yeah. And, that's and, a, sorry. Yeah. I'm like, that's a good no, point. No. It's not like we're like scrolling through our friends. With, okay. Right. Stacia, you're on the list, right? It's yes. Like, it's like that, list. that energetic um, match poll. I don't know what the right. Yeah. Would be. yeah. Um, like you're magnetized, magnetized to people who are. Yeah. Yeah. Or, who are going to be more of a match for you. And it's just yeah. investing your time into someone that's going to be able to improve mm -hmm. your well-being. Yes. Where, yeah. where you're putting your energy. Yeah. Well, yeah. also, if you find that you look at the five, because we become the five, the average of the five people closest that's, to us, right? That's, that's like, what I said. Damn. Yeah. I hope she says that because I couldn't remember how you said it. <laughs> yeah. We, we become the average of the five people average closest to us. Yeah. So look at your at your five closest people. Are they where you want to be? Mm. Okay. Are you where they want to be? Or are you all in this complacency and mediocrity in life of just like having life happen to you? Right? And feeling powerless and feeling like you can't take action. Yes. And start, you know, you can pick your five, you know what? You can you can connect to Nikola Tesla and start reading all his books. That could be one of your five. Right. It doesn't actually have to be a living, breathing person in the moment right now. Exactly. Okay. There are energies in this planet of people that are awe inspiring. And if you tap into those energies, they can be there to hold your hand and, and, and help you rise. Yeah. But there has to be a burning desire within you to do better, to be better, to grow, to make a difference, to, to, to do what you love and have your mission all of a sudden find you and, and then realize, oh my God, 
I'm doing my mission right now. Exactly. Yeah. Like we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On that note, Stacia, do you have a quote of the day for us? I do have a quote, quote of the, the day. day. <laughs> <laughs> So this quote comes from a gentleman named Muhammad Zayed. So it says, to shine, we must push others forward and stand together when needed. The failures of others will never mean your success. Our world needs a lot of solidarity. And this is the time to push the big ideas. I like that a lot. I love it. I mean, it's essentially what we just it's like, sort of I love how your quotes yeah. always summarize our 20 minutes. Yeah. And I love that Hannah just mentioned that you can, you can connect into the energy of anyone, anyone that inspires you Mm -hmm. and, and really makes you want to do better and makes you want to, you know, move yourself forward. And, and I love that that can be your, you know, your five is immerse yourself into someone else who put everything into what, when they were alive here, everything into it. And now you've, you can harness that and, and see where it takes you. Yeah. yeah, and build on that. And also, there's a new energy in the planet. Before it was me, 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 and now it's we, 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 it's- right? And I and and I'm always told like alone I can go fast, together we go far, mm. right? So if we pick our five, we're gonna go together, and we're gonna go far. Yeah. And that's what we should. That's what I aim for every day. Like, who do I want in my life? that will um, make me want to be a better person and that we're all going to go far together because I like the sense of community. I like the sense of belonging. And I've, I've learned that I can pick my people and have my own community. If you can't find the community, go make it. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, Which is what we do. We're making our own community every single day. And I'm getting the truth bumps. It's like we're building it every single day yeah and you can do that too anyone can do that yeah well thank you ladies this was lovely i hope everybody enjoyed listening uh, please remember to like subscribe share all the things so more people can have a ripple effect in their life and we will see you all on the next episode bye-bye bye Thank you for tuning in to The Ripple Effect by The Alliance with Hannah Martinez, Stacia Stove, and Sarah Jane Lita. We hope you're now vibing high and ready to create your own ripple. Drop a comment or email to let us know the ripple effect that you are creating. Music by our very own Hannah Martinez and music production by Onel Moulet. Follow us on Instagram at The Ripple Effect Pod for more high vibration content. Please rate and review us wherever you listen. Until Until next time. time.